A rock is tossed straight up from ground level with a speed of 20 meters per second. When it returns, it falls into a hole 10 meters deep. So pretty um, simple situation. Part A, what is the rock's velocity as it hits the bottom of the hole? There's actually a good number of different ways uh, of, of doing this problem. So maybe the easiest one in this case is to realize that if you throw out the rock at 20 meters per second, the speed on the way down, you know, when it touches the ground, it's gonna be uh, exactly the same. Well, if you didn't have like um, um, friction due to air, right? But it's negligible. So the speed's gonna be the same. Uh, the direction is gonna be opposite, right? So here is plus 20 meters per second. Here is minus 20 meters per second. So uh, we can use uh, this equation. because we know that this is acceleration due to gravity. So it's gonna be G and G points in the negative direction. We, are, oh, we know delta X, it's the 10 meters. We know the initial velocity. In this case, it's gonna be negative 20 meters per second. So it's the initial velocity in this segment. And the final velocity is what we want to know. Right, so we can use this uh, verbatim. So v, um, the velocity is going to be uh, negative 20 meters per second squared plus, it's actually minus because the uh, A is equal to negative G. So pointing down and the magnitude is 9.8 meters per second squared. So minus two, uh, well actually, just to make it more clear, I'm gonna leave the plus here, but this is gonna be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And the delta x, uh, it's also negative because it, x naught is gonna be here. And the hole is in the negative direction. So this delta x is negative. So negative 10, um, meters, negative 10 meters. So I'm going to leave this squared here. So then we can grab uh, our calculator. This negative uh, is inside of the square, so it's going to be positive 400 meters squared, second squared. Uh, here you have negative and negative, so that's a positive. So two times 9.8 times 10 is 196. So plus 196 meter squared, meter time, times meter, divided by second squared. So, Uh, 
uh, this is uh, 596. Can you still see that? Yes. 596 meters squared per second squared. So I'm going to continue over here. Sorry about that. So V is going to be the square root of 596 meters squared per second squared, um, which is equal to Twenty-four point uh, four meters per second, and that is the answer that we have uh, on the on the homework. At least the magnitude. So, the direction we know that it is going down. Uh, it is a little bit difficult to get that from this equation because um, you have a, a V squared, right? So it could be either 24.4 meters per second or negative 24.4 meters per second. You know, both values uh, will give you uh, this square root of 596. So when you use this particular equation with the quadratic, um, it doesn't tell you automatically what the sign is. So you might need to determine it from, from the situation. So, you know, in this case, it's negative 24.4 meters per second. And that is part A. So part B, I'm going to solve it in a very general way. Part B, how long is the rock in the air from the instant it is released until it hits the bottom of the hole? So I'm going to use uh, this equation. We know the initial velocity. Um, it's positive 20 meters per second. We know the initial position, it is zero. We know the final position, it is negative 10 meters. We know the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So we can get directly uh, what the time is you know, for how long it was in the air by solving these, this quadratic equation. So let's put in the values. This is negative 10 uh, meters equals zero meters plus 20 meters per second times the time minus, because it's pointing down, 4.9 meters per second squared because uh, it's 9.8 divided by two. Uh, t squared. And we can uh, rearrange it and maybe forget about the units for for a little bit. Just rewrite it so that it looks like a, um, an algebraic equation from your math class. So this will be zero equals, you know, we can move this one over here, 10 plus 20 T minus 4.9 T squared, right? So uh, remember that it just comes from this kinematic equation. So, 
So uh, A equals negative 4.9 and the coefficient over here, uh, B equals 20 and C equals 10. Uh, correct. So we can use the quadratic equation um, I mean the formula to find the roots for the quadratic equation. So T is going to be minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. So T is going to be minus 20 plus or minus square root of 20 squared minus four times negative 4.9 times C square root of all that divided by negative 9.8. All right, so this one is going to be minus four times negative 4.9 times 10. Uh, this is going to be plus 196. And this one is going to be 420 squared, right? So 400 plus 196 is 596. And we have the square root. So 24.4 which is actually the same number that we got before for the final velocity. Okay, so just so that we don't forget, uh, let's look at the units. B is a velocity, so it will be meters per second. And you're adding it. This will be meters squared, second squared, um, minus. Uh, it has no units. This one has meter per second squared and C is the distance, so times meter. Okay, so this is meter squared divided by second squared. Um, they are the same. So that means that you can actually subtract one from the other. And this is to the uh, one half. So that means that this squared goes away and this one goes away. So then you're just adding meters per second to meters per second. You are allowed to do that. So the units up here are just meters per second. Down here, uh, you just have the meters per second squared, right? So the, the meters go away and the second goes away with this one. And this is in the denominator of the denominator. So you can move it up to the denominator and it's seconds. So the units are seconds. So we are, we're good. So these units, you know, the whole thing um, it's going to be in seconds. 
So the two roots then, um, the first one is going to be minus 20 plus 24. Oh, this one, this one is negative. Um, plus 24.4 divided by negative 9.8. Uh, T1 is negative. 0 0.45. T2 is going to be minus 20, minus 24.4 divided by negative 9.8, so 4.5 in seconds. This is the answer that we get uh, that it's on the homework. Uh, this other route, it's at a negative time. So um, it's not physical, right? It occurred in principle. Uh, it occurred before we started counting. So um, we can, can ignore this route. This is the one that we care about. <clears throat> so um, you have your kinematic equation for the position as a function of the time. It goes up uh, and then back down and then 10 meters uh, in, into a 10 meter hole. That whole time, uh, that, that whole uh, thing is gonna take 4.5 seconds. So there is another way of getting the velocity. So let's, this was part B, but let's go to part A again. We wanted to know um, what was the velocity after the hole. So we know for how long it was uh, airborne. So then the velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. We know that the initial velocity was positive, 20 meters per second. Uh, the acceleration is always pointing down because it's gravity. So minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And we know the time, it's uh, 4.5 seconds. Uh, this seconds goes away with this one. So we have this in units, meters per second. So then here the velocity is 20 meters per second minus forty four point one meters per second. And so the velocity is negative twenty four point one meters per second, which um, again, it's the correct answer, but this, uh, this solution is more elegant because uh, you don't have to make uh, any assumptions or you know, gather any additional knowledge to get the correct sign of the velocity, right? Uh, but there are, there are several ways to solve this problem and I'm, I'm sure that uh, you guys are probably going to find um, new ones are, are going to uh, do it differently. All right. I hope you um, had fun. Thanks.